Let's talk a little bit about the components of the course. So what are the activities that you're going to be working on? How will you be assessed on them? And how will those assessments and my feedback turn into a final grade uh, for you at the end of the semester? So first of all, this is a course in applied calculus for business. And I take all four of those words, maybe not so much the word four, but the words applied calculus and business, I take all three of those words at least very seriously. Um, so what I've done is I've divided out the course content uh, into three overarching course goals. Uh, the first one being to choose and use a function model that describes a set of data. Uh, that's material that you'll find in chapter one of our textbook. Um, the second goal being to be able to use derivatives, differential calculus we call it, to quantify a rate of change and to describe what that rate of change means, again, within a context uh, of a business problem that we might want to solve. That's found in chapter two of our textbook. Uh, and then the third goal is to use integrals, integral calculus, to solve rate and area problems, again, within a context, within a business decision-making context. You can find that stuff within chapter three. So those are the three overarching goals, and those are going to be the three themes of our next three course meetings, so Friday, the following Tuesday, and the following Friday. Um, each of those goals is separated into what are called learning standards. These are the individual, what I, what I might think of as course competencies um, that I need to see you demonstrate in order to show that you're taking up the material and being able to synthesize it and understand what's going on. So for example, between now and Friday, uh, you'll be making some progress on these two uh, calculus learning standards, being able to use algebra to find, evaluate, and solve equations involving linear and quadratic functions, identifying initial value and growth factor, and evaluating and solving equations involving exponential functions. Um, those are two very mathy kind of learning standards. Uh, both of those, by the way, are things you probably, <coughs> hopefully sound familiar from kind of a, an algebra pre-calculus kind of context. Um, so we won't be breaking a lot of new calculus ground over the next several days uh, as we're getting warmed up into the course, but for me at least, and hopefully for you too, what's most important about these is that there's also an application learning standard. That I not only want you to refresh your skills on this sort of algebra pre-calculus level content, but I also want you to be able to use technology to determine a regression equation for a set of two variable data and to draw contextual inferences from the equation. So that's something that matters in an application in a business context. And the math that you're refreshing and you're taking back up in these two math learning standards is being used then in the application standard to do something in textual, do something authentic, do something meaningful. Um, and so each of our goals is kind of split up in those ways into a set of what I, call, what I call calculus learning standards that are sort of the math, meat, and potatoes, and then also the application standard, uh, which shows how you're plugging that math understanding and that math knowledge into contextual problem solving, decision making, and communication within the realm of business. So there's the two parallel tracks uh, that we're going to be operating on throughout the semester. The standards that are numbered, one, two, three, four, five, and six, are the math standards, and the letters are our application standards, A, B, C, and D. You'll notice that when we come back on Friday, uh, we'll have an opportunity to assess these skills on uh, an exam. It won't be a full length of the class exam. It'll probably be about 45 minutes or so. Um, and there will also be opportunities in the interim uh, to assess these learning standards on quizzes. Quizzes are done through Blackboard. I'll talk a little bit more about those uh, in a little while. So each of these standards is assessed in those two different ways, as, as quizzes, um, as well as in exams. There'll be an exam on Friday on this, and then also the very last day of the semester, on the 16th, there'll be a summative final exam that will give an opportunity to assess all the learning standards in the course. So quiz twice, exam twice. So there's kind of four opportunities uh, to demonstrate your mastery on each of the learning standards uh, that come up in the course. So that's how the material is organized. Um, now let's flip the page and go on to pages two and three in the middle. It looks like a big chart, a big checklist. This checklist, this checklist is your touchstone uh, for your, first of all, what are the standards that I'm going to be holding your work to? That's all described on the left-hand side of this table. So what are the types of work you'll be doing and the standards to which I'll be holding that work? Um, and then on the right-hand side of the page uh, is your place to keep track of your progress toward meeting those standards. Uh, I'll talk more about the, the progress uh, in just a moment. Um, but one thing you'll not notice anywhere on the syllabus is uh, talk of points and percentages and a pie chart and how I'm weighting the different grades and so forth, because that's not how I operate. Um, what I like to do is create a, a system that, pro that privileges not points, but rather progress and feedback. Uh, so what happens is, for example, when you take a quiz on Blackboard, the first quiz will cover that first set of two calculus standards and one application standard, one, two, and A. Um, you'll take that quiz, you'll submit it to me via Blackboard. That first due date is tomorrow night at midnight. Uh, what I'll do is I'll look at that quiz and I'll read it through three times, asking each time, 
did your work rise to the standard set by each of the learning standards, 1, 2, and A? So you get assessed on those all separately. Um, and then I give you feedback. Either yes, it met the standard, and could possibly be exemplary, in which case you get to check one of the boxes down in this land down here. And each of the calculus standards boxes that you check becomes a checkbox in this row. Each application standard box that you can check becomes a checkbox in this row. Boxes check from left to right, and so you can't check any box unless all the boxes to the left of it are also checked. Um, and then as you continue to demonstrate mastery of those standards via quizzes, via exam problems, and so forth, um, additional mastery can accrue down here. It gets you more progress across each of the rows in your grade chart. Um, you'll have reading discussion assignments. Each of those that you complete also gets you a check mark in that row. Um, the semester marketing project, um, once it meets the standard set forth in the syllabus for the marketing project, you'll, as a team, receive a check mark for that. Um, web work is our online homework environment. As you complete certain numbers of web work problems for the semester, you can check those boxes as well from left to right. And then the idea is that the grade that you get out of that process is that column in which you've been able to check off all the boxes in that column. So for example, it's day one of the semester. And maybe I'm coming into the course thinking, you know what, what I really want out of the course this semester is I really just want to be. Set a goal for yourself. Well, what does it take to get a B? What it takes is I need to be able to check every box in that B column. But in order to check off every box in that B column, Notice that that means two calculus standards, three application standards, a reading discussion, get an M on the project, complete 120 web work problems in total over the course of the two weeks. But in order to check those boxes, that means I also have to check all the boxes to the left. So I have to complete the D-level bundle and the C-level bundle in addition to all the requirements of the B-level in order to get that B. Right? So if I want a B, I need to be able to check off all of those boxes on my grade chart. Um, the last thing is, once you get the B bundle, um, how do you get a B minus or a B plus or just a plain old B? You notice that that's the last uh, little column over here. Uh, these are the E marks, the exemplary marks. So when you do a really ideal, perfect job on a math problem that not only shows a correct, complete, clear, and concise solution, but also includes written explanations such that this could be a model solution for others to learn from. If you do that on a quiz problem or on an exam problem, and I give you that E, then you can start checking boxes over on this side. So let's say that I not only complete the B requirements, but I also get three E's over the course of the semester. If I do that, my base grade is a B, and I don't get a plus or a minus, so that means I have a B for the semester. If in addition to all this, I've completed five exemplary marks over the course of the semester. Now, not only do I have a B, I have a B plus. So your overall grade for the semester is the letter that's determined by the bundle that you complete combined with a modifier, the plus or the minus, that's determined by how many exemplary marks you received over the course of the semester. And exemplary marks can come from your work on the calculus standards themselves, quizzes, exam problems. They can come from your work on the application standards also, quizzes, exam problems. And you can also earn an exemplary mark as part of the marketing project um, by, in addition to completing the, the, the slide presentation with your team, if you also complete an individually presented video um, presentation of those results and submit that, that can get you the E for the project for the semester. So no points, no percentages, no weights, nothing, just check boxes on this grade chart. And what I'll do is in Blackboard, I will maintain your totals of how many calculus standards have you met so far, how many application standards have you met so far, how many reading discussions have I given you credit for so far, um, and you'll be able to see in web work uh, what your total score is. So hang on to this piece of paper, uh, and as you continue to keep it updated, uh, that'll show you uh, your progress as the semester goes along. One of the great things, too, about this uh, is it means that, especially early in the semester, if you don't do well on something, so let's say you take that first quiz and there's some gaps there in your understanding. Um, and I look at it and I say, well, you're, you're kind of on the road, right, but you still need some additional instruction. So I give you a grade that's called an R. It's a reassess grade. The great part about it is it doesn't count against you. It just means that you haven't gotten that check mark yet, and you'll have more opportunities. Because each standard is assessed four times, and if you don't get it the first time, you have three more opportunities. Um, and all you need in the end is to get a maximum of two check marks per each standard. That's the, the most that you can get. So once you get those two check marks, Let's say it comes on a quiz and then it comes on an exam on Friday or something like that. If you get two check marks for standard number one, 
by the end of this week, for example, then you're done with that standard for the semester. That means that when you see it later on on the final exam, you can just breeze right over that problem and not have to worry about it. My priority is seeing that you've been able to master this content and not basically when. I don't want to hold you to my timetable, especially on the course of the next couple weeks. There's going to be a lot to do. Uh, and some of it is going to come more quickly than other pieces. Um, so most important to me is that I can see you demonstrate this mastery in however method that you do it, whether you do it on quizzes, whether you do it on exam problems. There's one other option that I'll talk about called the, the writing up your web work problems. You can do that as well. Um, whichever way you do it, uh, whatever combination, uh, as long as it's done, then it's done. And it goes on this grade sheet. Let me talk a little bit about web work uh, before we wrap up this discussion. Web work, uh, you'll see on the grade chart, is this bottom row here. The number of web work problems that you complete um, earns you the, the check marks in that row. Web work is an online uh, homework environment um, that's similar to if you've used environments like My Math Lab or WebAssign or Alex or those sorts of online homework environments in the past. Uh, web work is similar to that. Um, the biggest advantage to web work uh, is that it's open source, uh, which means that we all get to use it for free. Um, same thing, by the way, with our textbook materials. They are from the Open Course Library online, uh, so we are using all open source materials for this class, which means by the time you pay your tuition, we're not going to collect any extra money for you for textbooks or any of that kind of stuff. Um, but web work, um, let me jump into it from our Blackboard site real quick. One of the quickest ways to get to our web work course is to, in Blackboard, which I just turned on this morning uh, before class began, um, just jump over to the web work homework link over in the left-hand margin. Uh, when you jump in, it's going to ask you to authenticate, so just sign in with your Bridgewater username and password. You don't have to create a separate account or anything fancy like that. So just choose to continue. Um, and what you'll see when you land in uh, web work is a set of 10 problem sets. Um, and those 10 problem sets are the web work homework for the totality of the semester. Um, there's approximately between 15 and 20 problems on each one of these uh, assignments. Um, <clears throat> And so what I've done with them, because it's a short course, a two-week course, is I've just opened all 10 of these assignments. They're already open for you. So you can see any and all of them right now. Get started. Work ahead a little bit. It's probably a good idea, um, especially the first couple days uh, when we're kind of getting off to a, a ramp-up start. Uh, if you have the ability to work ahead, uh, it'll definitely help you down the line. Um, and the one thing about web work that is a little different than some of the other systems, like my math lab, for example, um, is that there's not a graphical environment in which to enter in things like equations. So if I want to enter in an equation like y equals 5x plus 6 or something like that, you just enter it in through the keyboard, y equals 5x plus 6, um, which is not too bad for an equation like that one. It's just fairly simple. Um, but when exponents and parentheses and fractions and other stuff start to come in uh, later on in the course, one thing that you might want to do that web work helps you out with is if you're not sure whether web work is going to understand your answer correctly, uh, what you can do is use the preview my answers button, which is down here. What that does is it just shows you uh, whether or not web work is understanding your answer correctly. Uh, in this case, it looks like the answer is no. Um, mm -hmm. Right, because this problem didn't ask me for an equation, it just asked me for a slope. So um, sometimes, if you answer the wrong question, <laughs> I didn't read it closely enough, um, checking to preview your answer will at least turn up that web work is clearly not understanding something you typed in. So in this case, it's because I have to reread the problem. Um, here's an example of a problem where I might want to enter in an algebraic expression for an answer. 6x plus 99. If I click to preview my answers, then what web work does over here in answer preview is it just shows you here is a, here's a, a typeset version of the answer that you just gave me. And you can double check that against whatever work you might have on your paper uh, that you're working on and just make sure that it lines up. If I have exponents or if I have fractions, I have other stuff going on and I click to preview it, um, that's when this answer preview gets to be especially useful. Um, just to make sure that you and web work are speaking the same language. For example, if maybe I didn't want this division by 5 to only be a, over the 99, maybe I wanted the division by 5 to be across the whole thing, then that might be how I caught that error. I realized that really what I wanted to do was put parentheses around the stuff before the 5. And now I've typeset what I've 
expected. So my point here, I guess, is just any time you're entering an answer in web work, which is an algebraic expression, it might involve variables, exponents, fractions, all that kind of stuff, make liberal use of that preview my answers button um, before, you, before you click to actually submit uh, your answer. That way you're making sure that web work is going to understand you in the way you want to be understood, uh, which is always the most frustrating thing with any online homework system, uh, is if you, you give it an answer uh, that might be a correct answer, but it might not be understanding it correctly. Uh, so definitely do, uh, do use that. Um, inside of web work, um, there's also a grades link uh, that you'll have on the left-hand margin. Uh, and what you'll do in the grades link is scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says homework totals. Um, obviously, it'll show you your, your question by question and problem set by problem set performance up to that point. But as far as your grade chart is concerned, it's this number right down here that comes before 184. 184 is the total number, maximum number of web work problems that you can complete this semester. Um, and the number that comes right before it is your homework total. That's the one that informs the bottom row of checkboxes on your progress report for the semester. Last thing to say about web work um, is that you may, at some point, want to print out a copy of your web work assignment. Um, this is not only useful for your own records uh, and for keeping a, a set of notes or worked out problems for yourself, um, but uh, it can also be useful for um, submitting you can submit those written, worked out web work assignments to me in paper form uh, for check marks uh, on your, on your, on your checkbox list. Um, so for that, to get a copy of a web work problem set, what you'll do is just scroll down to the bottom of that problem set where it says download PDF. If you click on that, it's going to give you this weird looking set of options, but really all you need to do is scroll down to the bottom, choose Adobe PDF. Um, I recommend you choose one column, otherwise it tries to put the problems into two columns on one page, which is, can get really cramped, um, so I like one column. But if you then just click Generate Hard Copy, it will generate in your browser a PDF copy of your web work problem set. Now, everybody's web work problem set is a little bit different from everybody else's. They're the same problems, but the numbers are varied a little bit. Um, and so this is your personal copy. You'll even have your name uh, right here at the top of it. Uh, and so what you can do to submit for additional checkmark mastery for the course is you can print this out and work out the problems right on this form. And then staple it together, hand it in to me at one of our class meetings, um, and then that can be considered for part of your grade as well. Um, and it's also just really useful to have for your own records uh, so that you have a running, running record of what you're doing inside of web work. So last couple things to say about the online presence uh, in our course. Um, Blackboard is kind of our central hub. Uh, I'll be keeping your running totals of your, of your grades uh, inside of Blackboard in the grades link, um, which is a little further down the, the left-hand bar. Um, I'm also maintaining a to-do list, uh, which is probably the most important thing to jump in and look at uh, in Blackboard. It has a list of everything you'll need to do before each of our in-person class meetings. So this list of five items here is everything to do by our Friday meeting this week. Um, there's reading and discussion assignments, um, homework practice, so this link takes you directly to, well, not quite directly, I'll show you in a minute, um, but that link can get you over to the web work problem sets, um, and also links to the project, um, the, the quiz and the project uh, information uh, for each week's uh, to-do list is here. Um, on the left-hand bar, there's a link to a PDF copy of the textbook if you just want to print out the whole darn thing or if you just want to keep a PDF copy of it on any of your devices. Um, that's a, a great link that you can use. Just get a copy of it and keep it with you. Um, that way you can even read it offline if you have a copy on your device. Um, there's also a link to various other videos that I've recorded in the process of teaching this course over the past couple of years um, that you may find helpful at various points throughout the semester. Here's a link again out to the whole web work course. Um, there is a link here to the marketing project, which we'll explore in a few minutes. Um, and then the most important link I guess I wanted to point out here is a link called Live Textbook. So if you click that, that takes you out to this page. Uh, and this is, a, this is what I like to think of as a running sort of uh, record of what we're doing in our course. And it's structured out by the various steps that make up our semester project. So we're going to talk more about what those steps are in a little while. Um, but what you'll be able to find here is, first of all, uh, for each of our various project steps, um, motivation. This is going to be something I build out using the videos that we record in class afterwards. Um, a Learn It tab, so there's actually a bunch of stuff here. Each of the Learn It tabs um, has specific links 
out to the chapters of the textbook that we'll be reading for each of these project steps, uh, as well as um, links to the specific web work um, uh, problem sets uh, that relate to the mathematics content of that. Um, apply it, those are also going to be links that I build out uh, using the material that we record during the class. Um, and then the decision reports, these are the individual building blocks that make up the semester project. Um, that information is out here as well. Um, so this page is going to be continually evolving with content uh, as we continue the, the semester over the next couple of weeks. Um, and it's also kind of a nice little one-stop place to make sure that you're linking out to the reading and annotation assignments correctly. Um, so the last thing I wanted to mention then are the reading and annotation assignments. So it's important in math as it is in any class to be, to be reading your textbook materials. It's kind of the, the number one source of, of where you're picking up uh, mathematics and, and applied content for the semester. But because this is a web hybrid course, I think it's especially important that that not just be something that you do in isolation, but that there be an opportunity for all of us to be in a conversation about the text as we're reading it and as your understanding of the content is developing. Um, so to that end, the reading discussion assignments that are a part of your grade chart um, will require you to jump into the reading using one of these links uh, that's right here. Uh, these links are also um, duplicated in Blackboard's to-do list. Um, so let's suppose that I want to jump into <coughs> chapter one, which is the chapter you'll be reading this week, um, and read either, so it comes in kind of two flavors, a brief synopsis, so this is a short kind of summary of the material that's in chapter one, and then there's the full expanded out text uh, version of chapter one. Um, just for now, I'm going to choose the brief synopsis version. And the link here, if you click on it, not only opens that synopsis as a PDF, but it opens it up in an annotation environment called Hypothesis. So the last thing I want to talk about is Hypothesis, how it works, how to get connected with it, what to do with it. So the way Hypothesis works is it lets you read this material right here in a browser, as usual. But it also provides you the ability to highlight, annotate, and make comments on the, the material that's on the page. And those comments are visible not just to you, but to anyone else who comes along to this page. So all of us. I'll be able to see your comments. Your classmates will be able to see and respond to your comments. So it creates like a little you know, sort of Facebook-style uh, conversation, comment conversation over in the margins. And it all begins by finding a passage inside of the, the text and highlighting it. So let's say I look at this line here that says, slope is a rate of change. And I think, huh, I kind of want to say something about that or ask a question about that. When you highlight something, this little widget will pop up that asks you to either, if you want to highlight it, all that's going to do is just make it a different color. So I, don't, I wouldn't do that. Uh, instead, if you choose the annotate button, then the little hypothesis annotation bar will pop up over here on the right-hand side. Right now, I'm not logged in to hypothesis. Um, so one of the first things you'll need to do is create a Hypothesis account. Um, that you can do through the link that's on our to-do list right now. Um, I already have one, so I'm just going to choose to log in. And then once I'm logged in, I should only have to do that once. So if you're logged in, and then you choose that annotation button, it will pop up this little window, and you can add your comment. What does it mean when it says rate of change? click to post, and it becomes, a part of, it becomes a part of the conversation on that page. I'm going to try that one more time just to make sure this is working beginning to end. Highlight it, slope is a rate of change. Choose annotate, it pops up the little window, and then I can add my comment. I understand slope from my pre-calculus class, but what does rate of change mean? Question mark. Add your comment. And so as you're reading through the text through these links. You can not only make your own comments, but you can also see what comments other people have left over here in the margins. Um, and if there's a comment that you think is particularly, if it poses a question that you'd like to respond to, or if you want to continue or add on to it, you can choose this little reply button. It looks like a little squiggle arrow right there. Um, and so you can create threaded discussions over here on the side as well. Um, Hypothesis is also nice enough that you can paste links. If you find good explanations of something that are or elsewhere on the web that you want to paste in there, uh, if you find YouTube videos, you can actually paste them. They appear directly in line uh, here inside the comments. Um, so it's just a great place to sort of congregate, have a conversation, ask questions, answer questions. I'm going to be lurking in these conversations. So if you have questions about the material as you're reading, um, 
I'm going to be sort of looking over people's shoulders, um, not only giving you credit uh, for contributing to these conversations, um, but also helping to use this as the platform for us outside of class um, to make sense of what you're reading. So those annotation links um, exist for each of the reading assignments, um, and those can come directly through the to-do list from Blackboard.